So, shalom, shalom. Greetings to you all in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, wherever you are. What an opportunity that the Lord has given to us. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ. This is a blessing, brothers and sisters. We should consider this as a blessing because he does it without expecting any any gift from you. You are not going to pay God. You'll never be able to pay him. He does not do it for payment. You know, because there's nothing you can give him. But he does it because he loves you. You know, love has been misty, has been misunderstood. And to many people have thought that is a, a transactional kind of love. That's not true. You know, trying to give you something in order for you to give you, to give him something. No. He did it because that's who he is. You know, once we get to know that that's who God is, it will transform and change our lives. The purpose of giving to us who he is is to help us see who he is. Thank you, Lord. I pray that you will walk in the goodness and the kindness of God today and nothing shall be withdrawn from you. Your experiences today will be amazing, will be great. Your experiences will be divine because that's the call God has called you in Jesus' mighty name forevermore. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jehovah. Thank you, Father. All oh, glory to God. So this is one of the things we need to understand, brothers and sisters, in Romans chapter 10, verse 7, because we dealt with verse 6, and verse 6 talked about the descending, you know, how Christ descended, you know. And uh, verse 7 says, Who shall descend into the deep, that is to bring up Christ again from the dead. So the another part is bringing up Christ from the dead. You see, these are deep things that Paul is describing here. And he's actually trying to get us or get these Jews or get these Roman believers to see what salvation consists of. He was arguing first and foremost uh, on the basis of what the Jews knew about salvation. And uh, he talked about the righteousness by the law and the righteousness from God. And he was saying that many people or many Jews there knew the only righteousness they knew was the righteousness by merit or what the law commanded. And that's what we saw in verse 5, whereby he said, okay, if you can do all that is written in the laws, then it's okay. You can live by it. And unfortunately, we never saw anybody doing it. And therefore, it is impossible for someone to live by the law. And so he brings now, he brings them into this understanding of what really salvation is. He talks about the incarnation. That means the uh, descending of Christ Jesus. And he talks about the ascension of Christ. That means, you know, those two moves, the descending and the ascending. So he is actually going to reveal to, to them what salvation is all about is the descending and the sending of Jesus Christ. It's not about the merit or anything else, you see. So this is what he's trying to describe in these terms in verse 6 and verse 7. So verse 6 and verse 7 is what we've been looking for at, but now specifically we're looking at verse 7. Why is Paul saying that uh, the ascending means... Uh, coming back from the dead, you know, rising from the dead. You see, for instance, Paul quotes his second argument to reveal the implications of the righteousness of faith, you see? So we have two, two uh, arguments, of course. The one is as descending and the second one is ascending, see? So his statement is, if Christ came down in his incarnation, and descended into the regions of the dead, you know that Jesus went and reached to, to hell in the regions of the dead, then who can descend 
to bring him up again from the dead. Do you see that Paul is actually inquiring? He's uh, presenting his eagerness to die and find Christ in order to obtain salvation, searching for him in the underworld. So Paul is saying, well, that, well, we, we oh God, when Jesus Christ descended to hell, when he, he descended to Hades, the realm of death, is like no one, his, if salvation now has gone under the, the underworld, has gone into hell, is anyone able to go there and die and then find salvation in hell? Well, Paul's answer is that Christ is already resurrected from the dead. And even if you could enter the underworld, you will not find him there since Christ is presently enthroned in heaven and divinely indwells his saints spiritually. In other words, you don't need to go to heaven to bring him down. You cannot go to hell because Jesus died you know, and think that you find him down there because he ascended. He resurrected on the third day, you know, and when he resurrected, he ascended in the heavenlies. But that meant something bigger. It means that he's going to dwell in the saints spiritually forevermore. Now, I, Paul is actually trying to tell them Christ is not in heaven and Christ is not in hell. Christ is in you. <laughs> my, 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 my. Oh, glory to God. Because that's what we'll see in the next verse. The next verse will say that the word is not far from you. That means not far from your reach. So, he said it's in you. You know, he will say in you. And that's when you confess your mouth in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We'll see all that. But before we get there, you see, he's saying that, you know what? Christ is in you. When there was this Descending, humanity was 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 all summed in one person, and when he died on the cross, humanity died. When he went to hell, ascended, they descended to hell. They they went together with him. When he rose, they rose with him. Why is he seated in heavenly places? Why are they? They are seated in heavenly places with him, and that means he's in them, spiritually speaking. So Christ dwells in you. So he was trying to reveal to them because of the work and the, the person and the work of Jesus Christ, this was to be the conclusion that Christ dwells in you. But they did not acknowledge that. They didn't know that that's exactly what Christ had done. See? The term the deep is a reference to the underworld. That's why he said who will go to deep to the deep. So it translates from the Greek word hades it is the abyss you know also known as the abode of the dead the idea paul is communicating here to his audience is actually um, in three fold you know first he's saying you do not have to die and go to the underworld, that means in the Hades, to find Christ in order to obtain salvation. So you don't need to first die and go to hell and find salvation. So salvation is not there. You, you're not going to find salvation. He's not actually even saying, he's not saying that salvation is, he's, say, he's not saying that salvation is, is in hell. Salvation is not in hell. Salvation is not even on the earth. In, in the earth. Salvation is not in heaven. Salvation is in one person. In Jesus Christ. He's saying that you do not have to die and go to the underworld to find Christ in order to obtain salvation. You don't need to die first to go and find salvation. Do you know that many people think they have to die first in order to obtain salvation? And that is terrible because that is wrong. You don't need to have, you don't need to die to find salvation. Number two, 
it means Christ is not in the underworld anyway because he has re resurrected from the dead. So Christ is not there because he resurrected. So if you are going there, it's too late. Christ resurrected from the dead. Number three, you can believe in Christ here and now. That's what it means. You can believe Christ here and now. Right where you stand and receive salvation. Salvation is not found anywhere else. Right here where you are, you can find and receive salvation. You don't need to die and go to hell. You don't need to ascend to heaven. You don't need to go anywhere. You don't need to merit it or to do something. In order to receive it, you need to receive it right where you are. That means salvation is where you are. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So a person who still believes that his performance is essential for salvation is denying the Christ is making intercession for us in heaven. For as such a belief denies that Christ has ascended unto heaven for us. And you know what? And that is uh, attempting to dethrone Christ from his present position. <laughs> you know, you should not be found guilty of attempting to dethrone Christ from his present position. So there is also a belief that we have to bear the punishment for our sins. You know, that is denying the full extent to the efficacy of Christ's death and the refusal of the sufficiency of his sacrifice. You cannot underestimate his efficacy, his efficiency in his work. You cannot do that. That is denying his efficacy, efficiency of his work. And most times this is done because people are ignorant of the extent of what he did. The extent of his work is too deep. Is too deep. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ. And the effects are so, so present and real. So if we are to be punished for our sins, then Christ might as well not have died for us. Why did Jesus Christ die for us? Why did he die anyway? Do you know that he took away the punishment of our sins? Then why would you again be punished? That is, that is not possible. Paul's point is that the finished work of Christ is so efficacious that his personal physical presence is not necessary to ensure the experience of the salvation of his salvation he has procured. So, the salvation that he has procured to us. God has brought his salvation near to every one of us in Christ. He has already risen from the dead to make it secure for us. So it is secure because Jesus rose from the dead. It is here, present, and available. So we have it here, we have it present, we have, and it's available now. You know, all this is present now because of the person and the work of Jesus Christ. He rose from the dead to secure this salvation. Shalom, shalom. Mm -hmm.